It has been a month, uh, at least, but the challenge series is, in fact, not dead. Breaking the fourth wall from the outset, uh, that uh, side story took way too darn long to do. And uh, it would have taken me significantly less time if there were an enter key in the share factory overlay system, but there is not. So that was great. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, 27 and a half minute video, it's going to take a bit to make, no matter what. But, oh my lord. Anywho, uh, it is now basically summer, so far as Minnesota is concerned, because it's... We skip. We skip spring here. We go straight from uh, 8 inches of snow on the ground to 75 degrees in about 10 seconds. It's literally only noon here, and it's already in the high 70s outside. So... Uh, you can blame that if my mic is picking up the small fan across from me. I don't know if it is or not. And hopefully if it does, it won't be audible over the sound of the cars as we get into the first race of the episode. So we are here ahead of the first race of the episode to sort of establish the some of the new things included as we go into the first race of the week. Uh, the side story mentioned a lot of the new drivers showed seven of the 13. Yes, 13. Uh, that's obviously not all of them, and two of the others are in this very race. To start with the ones that were shown in that, we have uh, Neptune, who drives an R33, and her sister Nepgear, somewhere, who has an R32. Uh, Vert, who starts on the pole here, has an FC RX-7, and Blon has a Mark III Supra. Apparently those are like the big ones of this game industry world. A name like that sounds like they're making it up. But the, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't believe it if it weren't for the fact that six other people came out of nowhere and seamlessly went, went along with it despite Noir having zero contact with them in three months. So I'm inclined to believe it off of that alone. At any rate, uh, there are also two people that were not during, they're not really present during those proceedings. But are here. You can see one starting behind Blonde. Kate Iffy in an S15 Sylvia. And Christina Compa in a 350Z. Those two, along with uh, Neptune and Nep Gear have combined forces to start their own team, Planetoon Racing. Coincidentally, that entire team is driving only Nissans. R32, R33, S15, 350C. I don't know if they planned that, but that's what happened. I've heard of the Sylvia sisters, but only one of them is driving one. And they're not, that's not one of the sisters. Also, uh, the the new Neptunia characters, apparently that's the phrase they keep going with, already have made a mark on the Challenge Series landscape, as Nepgear, who apparently happens to be a mechanical freak, managed to, for all intents and purposes, resurrect Eric Wostrowski's Ferrari 288. This thing should have been scrapyard material, but she somehow fixed this thing to be just as good as it was the last time we saw it on the racetrack. I don't know how. But I'm not going to question it. Uh, I mean, I am going to question it. I'm just not going to think too much about it. Um, and then the last new driver that is here is Jean Casillas, who is a, uh, a friend of Fidel and Jake. But curiously, he's not on JSR yet. Not exactly sure what's going on there. Maybe he's one of those that likes to work on his own. I've certainly heard of that before. But, I don't know. He's got this, like, snakeskin Corvette. This seems like a paint job. It should be on a Viper like mine, but it's just not. Anywho, uh, we are on board with uh, Nico Yazawa for this race. Uh, let's get this uh, get the party started.
And we are once again green for the challenge series after a month off. It is Interlagos plane host to a 675 class event. If you couldn't guess that already from the three or four minute introduction sequence. Uh, Nico's currently trying to negotiate the U.S. muscle conglomerate ahead of her, with a Super V and a Corvette in, in, uh, in her way. Well, that was easy. She'll get iffy for good measure, too. Apparently her actual name is Aya. I really didn't, really don't know if I wanted to accept a two-letter last name, though, so she went with the nickname that Neptune, and uh, everybody else usually calls her. By everybody else, I just mean Neptune and Combo. He goes making quick progress once she managed to actually, like, if she kind of stalled a bit off the line, I think she gassed it up too much. But looking for 14th on Noir, she's gonna just about sneak through. Makes it three wide with Barbara and Eric. That succeeds way better than it had any right to. Where it was the pulsator, but she's already following a good ways. Uh, Stephanie, Maki, and Isabel have already made short work of her arc 7 and uh, there's a couple more people waiting in line to do the same. Nico with some massive understeer, trying to get ahead of her uh, teammate, Haneo. The super's mad in a straight line. She's gonna send it down the inside of three people. The camera's not gonna help things at all. Yeah, that was a that was nearly four wide. It might have actually been at a certain point. Nico didn't get it stopped completely, <clears throat> so Kampa takes the spot back from her. But now she gets a really good run out of turn three. Actually, has to let off and not run the three fifty Z over. And Nico's back on her way. Only a lap and a half in, and she's already into the top third of the field. Has not been a great showing from the new debut drivers thus far, as Isabelle and Kaiser will go too wide in turn six. Stephanie wins that battle. The bird is kind of hanging on for dear life against a TVR and a Tundra. And now Nico is not far behind either. Three are decently spread out, and Bird is basically trying to stave off the apocalypse here. Nico is going to sneak up the inside of the truck as her longer gear ratios allow her for allow for a much better power band, and she's going to grab three more places on one straightaway. And this time, she just about will get it slowed down for turn one. Schwartz trying to take the spot away from Vert, and probably will now that he has the inside out of turn three. Oh yeah. Futaba's gonna try and do the same thing. That truck is gonna run out of gears in a minute. Vert brake late enough. Oh, she brakes late enough. She actually sends it down the inside of Schwartz, but can't find the route for that. Ika's made good on her escape plan. Now she's catching up to Aspinall up there. Only halfway through the race tonight, and she's in fourth place. Casillas is making some solid progress himself. He started in the back five. I believe he started around 15th or something. He's in eighth. He's steadily making his way towards the uh, towards the truck and the RX-7, the first.
Nakir is also right along there with him, <clears throat> as uh, she's being followed by the car that she apparently spent most of yesterday fixing. The straight line power of this Corvette is unreal. I think it's better of a dive there. Nico, meanwhile, is about to catch up to Espinal for a podium position. But just shy of two laps to go. Isabel tries to break the slipstream, but it's to no avail. That Supra got way too good of a run to keep that back. Nico understeers in turn 5, that's a new one, but she manages to steal the place away from the Mustang. So it's, now it's just her versus two more European sports cars with a lap and change to go. Further back, Bird is still managing to keep that truck at bay. And now the Corvette is in play. Bars. Kaiser does not seem to have anything in store for that Maserati. If he had just been simply holding station for the last three laps, pretty much ever since they all passed, or rather, pretty much ever since she overtook Aspinall, he's just been kind of hanging out here. But Nico Yazawa is forthcoming to, uh, Change the landscape of that. And she's over here driving one handed through turn three. And she's still gained massively on Stephanie. Thought about it in before, but. No opportunity, just just barely too far away, but uh, she'll be close enough now if she decides to try, and oh boy does she. Well, she doesn't even need to go too wide, she's clear of the breaking point. Can she steal the win from her buddy Maki up there at the last minute? Some hairpin needs to go, I imagine the Super's going to be a little better in those than the Maserati. This is going to head right down to the wire here, I suspect. chance there. Was that a good run from the last turn, though? I think so. Oh, yeah. She's too wide now. Hold it on the outside. Barely. That's gonna go right up to the start finish. They bang doors. They bang doors again. Ugh. Nico nearly gets turned by her teammate, but she manages to get a very physical victory over Maki here at Interlagos. Maki and Kaiser will join her on the podium. And despite starting last out of them all, pretty much, Jean Casillas is going to win the sort of unofficial race between the uh, debuting drivers with 7th place. Burt will end up with 8th. Nepgear with 11th. 11th? 10th. I can, I can numbers. Uh, not my best race. I, uh, I don't even know what the problem was. Just no cornering. Turn three was a nightmare. <laughs> and I think Hanio and Ify had a collision. I remember seeing them... Uh, they didn't do enough dam They didn't do much damage to each other, but it was enough to lose them a bit of time. They didn't pit, because it was on the last lap, but they collided. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it for race one. So, uh, uh, not the greatest showing for any of our new drivers. The best one finished in seventh, but then again, we have probably five of the best drivers in the 675 class up here. Honestly, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Stephanie didn't have something for Maki, considering she's been on a tear in that 996, like basically since day one. 
Riho with P6, just with cornering traction. John Casillas, the sort of unknown, because he never showed up in the side story, he is the one that comes away with P7, defeating all other debuting drivers. We are green from the second race of this episode. It takes us to a track we have not visited too much in the Challenge Series. Colorado Springs as a uh, place host to a dirt division event because it couldn't play host to anything else. You know, being a dirt track and all that stuff. A uh, smaller field, only 16 cars. It's not as much interest as there usually is in a dirt race. But uh, our POV driver, Cosmo Hanamura, is certainly making the most of the situation and uh, whipping his car everywhere. I mean, that's how you're supposed to race on dirt, isn't it? You, you wouldn't be able to tell the AI that. Oh, I asked Subak is getting a bit physical with one of our one of the two new drivers here. Uh, two that didn't show up in the 675 race earlier. Uh, the first is Sarah Uni. There. I was trying to get that on screen. Uh, yeah, interesting call from her. She, uh, she agreed to join NFR, despite having an argument with her sister, who is Noir. Uh, good camera, that's... Apparently her main goal here is just to prove herself to be as good as Noir is. Getting, like, Kurt and Mark Wild vibes here. For those who know who those drivers are. And then also, uh, Yo, not you, Yo Watanabe in an Evo 10. Apparently, also a former school idol. Much in the same vein as, uh, Mercury Girls are. Uh, I guess she entered Love Live after they did? She seemed very attached to her former group. She's been disconnected from them much uh, much to the contrast of all the Mercury Girls, who are a very tight-knit bunch, despite having graduated five years ago? I mean, I guess it depends on who you're referring to. I think, what was it? Well, the third years graduated in 2016. Or, the oldest ones did. Knows me, Ellie, Nico. They graduated in 2016. And so by 2018, Haneo, Reen, and Maki graduated. Fill in the blanks. Uh, is there anyone else that's new that I'm missing? No. Okay. Uh, Rebecca Briggs started on pole, and she is maintaining the race lead despite being in a vehicle that's slightly out of its depth. Not only is it rear wheel drive, it's also in a category lower than everybody else's. However, probably helping that is the fact that the two cars behind her also our rear-wheel drive. Noir is in the 675, but Tyler is, he just got consumed by Uni, who's clearly on a mission to catch up to her sister here. She certainly has the better vehicle for this, so she shouldn't have all too many issues doing so. As Aya nearly takes out the cameraman there, trying to hang, hang a two wide with Macintosh to make that fast stick. Hanamura down the inside, he does the same. He's not aware he had any sort of particular rally skills, but he is, he's not a slouch, clearly. He's making his way up the ranks pretty quickly. And he has caught Rebecca. Shouldn't have too many issues passing her, since Noir did the same thing when uh, the camera was not looking. I don't know how or what, when, but I suppose we wouldn't be better to go back and find out what it was. They both, I think, got really snap over steer there. Noir has to really struggle with that since she's in a mid engined rally car. Uh, NSX really is not the vehicle I would imagine to use as a rally car. I should really look at getting her- Oh, she took advantage of brakes sliding downhill on the downhill right. And she just kind of inserted the vehicle there and made the pass.
I don't know his driving style is so dramatically different from everyone else's. He's just going like maximum angle in so many of these turns. Everybody else is just kind of hanging on. Uni is like almost seems like scared to try and pass brakes. I don't know what the problem is. Now that could be easy as pie. Oh, they both collided, but the camera kind of faded away there. I didn't really see what happened very well. Oh, Briggs was at a fucking 90 degree angle. Uni manages to save her from a dramatic crash, but actually gets walled because of it. So they both lost more time as a result. And Awara's got a pretty comfortable lead here, in spite of her vehicle's obvious shortcomings. But I fear she may be taking her foot off the gas. She's not pushing the car, like, at all. And Rebecca is. And now Hanamura enters the picture. He's probably ushering them on, just by being in their mirrors. As if Yuni wasn't doing that. I don't, I don't know why she wouldn't have been already, but... Oh, Hanamura's way out of control, but he manages to pull the e-brake to keep the car going the right way. Yuni still has not found an answer for this car. I don't understand why not. Like, just, just get a good corner exit. Just overtake it. It cannot be that hard. I mean, I guess I'm not in the race, but still. At some point, you should really consider getting... Uh, Noir, a more legitimate rally car than an NSX. I mean, she certainly seems to be doing the, jo the job fine now. Probably got like a two, two and a half second lead over Rebecca at the moment. Yeah, I'd say about two and a half. Her sister's still being contained by the Camaro. She really struggles with this. Oh, Noir made a huge error herself, though. I was just saying she was doing the job well. Oh yeah, bad bounce there. Oh, a second bad bounce. A bit of a wall tap, and everybody just slams the brakes to not... Well, like, Rebecca kind of bumped into her. But it's hot on her. I just... I mean, obviously he got checked up, I guess. So I guess it's just like, hey, what are we doing here? Now he's stuck behind his sisters fighting for second place. Yuni got overtaken on the previous turn. She tried to stick her nose there, but somehow didn't have the traction. I don't know how not. Oh, Hanamura gives her a huge shove there but she maintains the position. Turbo, oh my word. Oh, he's getting used up by Aya now. He's not happy with that. Used up again. And he's seen enough. He's just gonna shove her right out of the way. <clears throat> kind of conduct you expect in a dirt race. It's like Rallycross. She wanted to. She wanted to send it on him again. I saw that. And now we got both. Actually, not just both. We have everybody now. We basically have most of the field. Hanamura gives Uni another push, and eventually Hanamura will just take Uni around the outside or try. Nope, he will not. Couldn't find track. Give her another bump. Forces her way off line. Noir is offline, everybody is offline, nobody knows how to take that turn at all. And that gives Hanamura the lead, they get, they door each other. Four wheel drive exit speed though, the Celica finally moves into the race lead. Now he just needs to not throw it away, like the other leaders have done multiple times thus far. The two last station sisters, since so that's apparently where they're from, they're not French. Uh, oh, Panamura has done exactly the thing I mentioned he needs to not do, and hit the wall at relatively high speed. But Rebecca wasn't close enough to really do anything about it. Even still, about a second advantage over the Camaro. Noir finally breaches her defense, and Uni will attempt to follow. Can't though. 
Now Rebecca gives Noir a bit of a tag going through here. Forces her off flying, she's gonna try and take that spot back. But the NSX has the inside, and Yuni's gonna barge her out of the way as well. I know these two have a sibling rivalry, but I'm sure that even she didn't like seeing her sister get pushed around. And no, it isn't a sibling rival- it's not gonna be a sibling rivalry like we had with the Harris sisters or anything. The way that I think Neptune described it was... Uh... The only- What the hell went on back here? Neptune described it as, the only thing we want to do more than win is beat each other. Oh, Noir super sent it there. And uh, she's gonna pay the price for that. Her sister's gonna get ahead. I'm forgetting how to use cameras. So Yuni is gonna take that first step, proving herself equal to or greater than Noir. He's, he's gonna get down the inside, but Hanamura's gonna have the better exit. He will grab a very chaotic Colorado Springs victory. Followed on the podium by 82 uh, Station Sisters. And then Aya is going to hang on for fourth. Rebecca, the second that she let Noir by, she just plummeted. But even still, round of applause for even managing to run that well in a car that's underpowered. One of the uh, six cars in that category in this race out of 16. And she beat them all handily. She beat four... Okay, I, I forgot that uh, the Charger is... 640. Okay, so there's three, four, five, six, seven cars. So it's almost half. But she ran in the lead for the first half of the race. Uh, and then took it back for a while when Noir made a mistake. So Rebecca had some good patience. Just got caught at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that resulted her in, resulted in her finishing in a mere seventh instead of probably a top three where she should have had. Honestly, she... Maybe like fourth or fifth should have been a top five at least. I can imagine her being passed by Hanamura eventually. He was just stuck in traffic. And maybe Noir and Yuni would have beaten her, but I think if she had just let let the the let the fizzing soda explode a little sooner, she probably would have managed to hold on to fourth over Aya and my dad. But eh. I don't I, you know, you never know, obviously. We can talk about what ifs as much as we want. Still got 7th place, still an immense effort from the Camaro driver to even hang on to what she did with a rear-wheel drive car that was massively underpowered from every car that finished ahead of it. So, and even a few that finished behind it. Yo, I really expected better from her. She kind of pushed herself as like a person who might do well on Rally. I mean, she has the right car for it. She has an Evo. But she just did not. Maybe she was stuck in the wrong place, too. Who can say? The third race of the episode is away. It is High Speed Ring, <clears throat> playing host to a 750 event. A relatively even mix of GT3s and non-GT3 cars. I believe the word you're looking for is road going, Raker. As uh, everyone just uh, tentatively files towards turn two, uh, Noir is the driver we're on board with as she gets smacked around by Thomas O'Reilly. There's exactly one new driver in this race, and that is uh, Wataru Tate, or uh, White Charisma, as he's known on the highways of Tokyo. Here on a personal recommendation from the guy who's currently in the lead, but the way that Ivan just took the final corner uh, isn't anymore. Um, one of the best drivers to ever grace the streets of Tokyo, or just streets in general, apparently. Somebody's having fun up here. Oh dear, Ward! 
He managed to save that somehow, but loses a number of positions in the process. <coughs> the TT3 is running completely different lines. It makes this look super chaotic, and it's like kind of funny. Yeah, meanwhile, I, uh, I had some fun myself. By that I mean I got ass-packed by Eric. So much for not being like your dad! I'm gonna get another view of Maki here. She's kind of gotten the, uh, the air taken off her front end, and we. She does save the car, but goes back down to about uh, 14th as a result. Just to the outside of Kaiser. Attempting to outbreak an out corner at Dirt 3 is not exactly an easy task. She doesn't have the required turning to do so there, but she'll just get a good corner exit. She also has damage of her own. I didn't notice and don't think she did either. She's gonna try the group 3 line. Kind of walked Stephanie off as a result. To ride with Blackpool, forced to concede on corner exit. Forced to concede again on corner exit as Blackpool uses the whole racetrack in spite of Noir being there. Oh, that windshield banner does not leave a whole lot of room to view what's going on. All right, no, no cockpit. Let's just go with chase cam. Try the outside again, it seems. It's kind of thrown off by O'Reilly, I think. And gets smacked around by Blackpool twice. I'll do a bit more damage to her. And probably tick her off quite a bit. Just a clusterfuck of traffic here in the mid pack. Whoa, Tate with. No control, man, just to save the RX-7 heading through turn 2. I'm beginning to really question if this, this layout is really safe for the, some of these cars. The reverse layout, not having to brake for the final corner, makes the other direction much more uh, agreeable. But going this way, I don't know how, much, how many more times we'll be using this layout. It seems every time we race here, we have some big crash that nearly fucking kills a driver. Well, that was cool. Got interrupted for mom to show me something she picked up on the grass. This has been a very difficult recording to do. I've been interrupted multiple times. Noir gets used by Black Pool again. You know, you'd, they're in the same type of car. You'd think you'd be trying to work with them. I know he's a bit of an aggressive guy, but... Like... You're both in Vipers, man. You'd probably be in the top three if you stopped running into each other. As Tate is having fun once again up here. War tries the outside of Blackpool again, because that's worked so well thus far. Gets bodied again. We should have fucking known better than to start the recording again. Anyway... Ugh, 
I have gas, apparently. Okay, at this point, Noir, you gotta find some new way to overtake him, because obviously he's not gonna let you do that. I don't know how the, the first four times he's done that to you haven't been a clear enough an indication that that simply isn't going to work. Because he's driving like a blind ostrich, he's just sticking his head in the sand. Oh my Jesus! I mean, it had happened eventually. He smacked her around so many times, it was starting to look like a not safe for work artwork. I think we already had, yeah, we already had Tate up here losing control, and he just slides up. Just, nope, just goodbye. Nope, no overtakes. Oh, HFA had a great view of this. And he's just getting overtaken by Black Bull, then here comes Noir. And goodbye. Yep. He almost avoids it, and I think he was just too stunned to react to that. And that is, unsurprisingly, a red flag as her car is just lazily drifting across the track at, like, 9 miles per hour. Okay, there was nobody else coming for a while, but... Uh, yeah, that brings... That summons the fra... the frag... the fra... Wow, I... I have forgotten how to speak. Flag of the Red Variety, which will grant Thomas O'Reilly the victory by default. Ivan Sotokov will take second, and Iwasaki will have third. Tarte will place fourth in his debut, after keeping Blackpool at bay for so long. Probably helped by Noir's constant prodding at him to overtake. Probably would have been able to pass Tate if he didn't spend so much time trying to keep Noir in his review. But uh, that will that'll do it for this race, and probably for that car, if I had to guess. That's going to be a fun tax write-off later. <sighs> I mean, I guess it was a spare, so it's not like I lost a whole lot, but it's still annoying.